Hi everyone, my name is Mr. Erickson Verdon. I think it's fair to say that I'm already used in standing in front of students inside the classroom. However, with all the spotlights on, it's quite intimidating. Right? Right? When I heard that the TEDx theme was about collision, I got excited because I know that collision can be associated with physics, but also I know that it can be associated with my life. Collision is one of the topics that I know I can just wake up one day and I can just teach it because I know it by heart. I have been teaching it for quite some years now. I know that it's quite a long time, and that experience taught me to, to master the subject. Here are some random pictures that I have towards my journey. I started teaching at the age of 20 years old, and just recently, just yesterday, I celebrated my birthday, my 30th birthday. So here are some pictures that I can share with you. And I think that experience made me a better teacher. But then again, I realize also that it's quite fascinating that I am in this field of teaching physics for quite some time now. Physics is just beautiful. I understand now that physics has so many laws. And one law that I know is the law of conservation of energy. It, say, it states that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It just changes from one form to another. Wow, that's deep. So that means that it's just being converted. Let's look at this sample. For example, I have a coaster in here. It has the maximum height. That means that I have the maximum potential energy. While it is going down, then that means that it is decreasing its height. And that means that it's gaining its speed and gaining its kinetic energy. In conclusion, we can say that the potential energy was just transferred into kinetic energy. That means that the total energy was just the same and constant all throughout. It's just being transferred from one form to another. Since our theme for this year is collision, let me just go through it in physics. There are three kinds of collision in physics. One, we have the elastic collision. In elastic collision, we have kinetic energy is conserved. That means that if I have two vehicles here hitting on each other before and after collision, of their energies will be the same. For instance, I have 2,000 joules here, then I am expected to have 2,000 joules after. When I am reflecting of this particular concept in my life as a teacher, this is my goal. When I was starting, I want to make sure that if I give my 100% in presenting my lessons, in making sure that they can get the best possible grade, I want them, I want the after collision and after giving the, um, the topics to them, I want them to get the possible grade. I was so idealistic when I was starting because I thought that the grades that I have, the best grades that students have, is a validation for me to become a successful teacher. But there is another two kinds of collision. We have inelastic and perfectly inelastic collision. So for instance here, we can say that the kinetic energy was not conserved. That after colliding with each other, the sum of their energies after collision is less than 1,000 joules. And when I am reflecting my life as a teacher, this is the reality. That even if I give 100%, I am not really getting what I give. That 100% energy in preparing for my lessons, managing and forgiving all my strategies, 
the efficiency there was just low. So I was thinking to myself, is my energy really wasted? Is my effort really wasted? Let me tell you a story. Look at this picture. This picture quite, is quite odd. I got it like a couple of years ago. If you're going to look at it, you might simply think that we're friends. However, they're not my friends. They were my students. And they look like I am their friend. I started teaching when I was 20 years old. And I was teaching physics in fourth year high school. And those students are roughly 16 to 18 years old. So this, the age gap was just so little. I met Georgia. Georgia was funny, talented, creative, intelligent. And I pushed her because I saw potential in her. I pushed her to be one of the best. In fact, when she graduated high school, she ranked second and even continued in her university to be one of the best. I was just proud of her. But what made me proud is that after graduating, I found out that recently she was chosen to be a teacher in Japan. It's not easy to be a teacher in that area because she's young. I called her up. Hey, Georgia, I'm so proud of you. I never thought that you will become a teacher also. You know what she replied? Mr. Verdon, it was because of you. Your passion and energy while you were teaching me those activities in science, in physics, have propelled me to become who I was right now, who I am right now. And that exact energy and passion is what I am using to my students. These are her pictures that she sent me. And it was true. The law of conservation energy was true. That the same energy that I was using before was that energy that she's using right now. It's just being transferred from one form to another. I was just a tool, and she is becoming a tool for that purpose. It was quite fascinating for me to realize that I was wrong when I was starting. That grades, although it's important, does not define who you are. It does not define your purpose. Grades are not enough for you to validate yourself. I know it's going to be a long road. I know it's going to be a long road. We had collision in the past. That collision, I knew very well that there was a transfer of energy. I will never get credit of what she has done because it was her achievement. But I was proud to say that I was part of her journey. That journey, I was also part of every student's journey, of my student's journey. I know very well that that particular time and that particular place is a collision. It's not a coincidence. It's in Chinese, Yuan Fen. It's destiny. And it was destiny that I meet that person and collided with that person. That collision gave me that opportunity to give and share what I have. Because for anything, we are who we are right now. It's because of that multiple collisions that we had on people. We just have to thank everyone. May it be little energy, may it be small energy transferred to us. They are part of our lives. So it's just up to you. Because sooner or later, everyone will die. We will die. That's the process of nature. But the most important thing is that how can we be remembered? 
with the kind of energy that we are giving to other people. Ask yourself, in your next collision, how are you going to use that kinetic energy? Thank you very much.